Welcome to the Beyond 20 Sharewell tutorial series. In this episode, we will demonstrate how to create and utilize a universal filter and navigation system for reporting dashboards in Sharewell. Let's begin by demonstrating how the Beyond 20 dashboard navigator works in Sharewell Service Management version 10. We have added the navigator to the executive dashboard, which has reporting for incidents, problems, and change requests. The navigator includes three dashboard filters, one for each business object, a one step to set the initial filter options, selecting the start range, the end range, and the, in the team. Once you have selected the team, you're asked to select the initial team member you would like to report on. And then we've added some debugging pop-ups that will show you the values of the uh, report options as they are created. The initial pop-up shows us the start date, end date, team, team member, and the ordinal or the actual count of team members that have been added to a stored value that keeps track of the team that has been selected. Next, it's iterating through all of the team members and creating a stored JSON array that contains each one of those team members and their ordinal number. And then finally, it shows us that we selected second level support, which has five team members. We selected the team member with ordinal one, which we see is Emma Carson. And remember, JSON arrays are zero based arrays, so ordinals for five members would run from zero to four. Now that we've set our team arrays and options, we can activate our filter by clicking on any one or all three of the filters. We added two navigation one steps to allow you to navigate from one team member to the next by clicking on prior or next. We also added a prompt to allow you to select which team member you would like to show next. Next, we'll show how this navigator system works inside the Sharewell Administration Console. So we have a blueprint that we've created here, and what we did was we went into the Dashboard Editor, and we're looking at the Executive Dashboard, edit that. And so the rest of the dashboard is very much unchanged from the out-of-the-box Executive Dashboard pack. Or if we did add a label up here that tells us what our values are for our filter, we've added this set filter options, which is a one step, goes through, and simply does the following. The first thing we do is we want to build out our different store values here for reporting. We have reporting team count, which is a numeric value. Uh, reporting start date and end date are both date time values. Uh, the reporting team ID, which is different than the rec ID, that's used so that we can get our list of reporting team members. We also have user full name and reporting team name. The reporting team rec ID allows us to build our collection. Now, once we have the team ID, then we use two different metrics that we've created to get the team name and the team rec ID. So our team name metric, and we also have a team rec ID metric, and I will show you what those metrics look like. The team name metric is a query value metric based on the business object of team info, has a data type of text, uses a custom query, where the team info team ID is equal to our reporting team ID store value. 
and the value we return is a function is first, so the first record it finds, it'll only find one, and then we're returning the field of name. The team rec ID does exactly the same thing, looks exactly the same until we get to the value, and then the value is rec ID. and our team members, which will be the collection. That's a JSON array collection. I'll show you how that looks right here. And these are all value user specific, and this one is a type of JSON array. We also built out a stored value called zero so that we can reset our ordinals when we run this. This is just our pop-up for debugging. You can either hide that pop-up or delete it from the one step. Then we're going to go to a record. In order to make this possible, we did have to promote the team info business object to a major business object. And then we built a relationship back to user info using constraints where the user info rec ID is a member of the team ID. And that's how the relationship works for team info linking the user info and this allows us to step through the user info as a child business object and then build our team member array so we build it first as just a text value called team members and so what we look here is if our team member count so if our reporting team count is equal or is less than one, meaning we're on our first record, then we just add a member item. Uh, we don't need a comma because we might only have team, one team member. However, if it's greater than one, if it's one or greater, then we are on our second team member and we need to go team members plus a comma and then our next team member. And then each time that we run this, we want to increment our uh, team count. And so that's the uh, reporting team count plus one. So that happens inside our step through user info. The next thing we do is we have to create our reporting team members JSON array. So we need to add an array braces to or array brackets to the team members stored value that we built. And then we're going to store the team members into our reporting team members as a JSON array. Next, we need to set our starting ordinal, and we do that by stepping through our reporting team members, and we will use the variable name will be member. And all we do here is we're showing this for, we're showing this pop up, uh, which is just a debugging pop up. Again, you want to hide that if you're actually running this in a live environment. And what we do is we look to see if our array or username if the username for this member matches the person that we selected so we have here this is the modifier being json and then string from element which was full name when we built it and if it matches the reporting user full name that we selected then we're going to get the ordinal and the ordinal is got the same modifier number from element and it's called member. So that's how we get to ordinal. Now we have our starting ordinal. We have our last debugging pop up here. It tells us that the team info name has how many reporting team members and we selected a starting point with that reporting ordinal for the team member that we want and then it gives us our list. So that's how that worked. This piece right here then sets all those stored values. The filters for each object are set up this way. So we have incident and it uses a incident date range by team member. So we built a search filter for each one of the business objects for date range by team member and it just looks and sees if the created date is within the as the start date and the end date for reporting, uh, that the owned by team is equal to the reporting team name, and the owned by is equal to the reporting user full name, those sort of values. 
So each one of those filters looks uh, uses the same criteria, but the search is based on the different business object. And then we have our navigation and the navigation uh, widgets. They both do the same thing. Oh, one moves forward, one moves backwards. Really, all they do is they check to make sure for the big prior one to make sure that we're not going to go below zero. So basically, if it's uh, greater than or equal to one, we're going to move backwards. If we're moving forward, make sure it's not, it's less than the end value or the total team count. And then we take our reporting ordinal and we decrement it if we're moving backwards and we increment it if we're moving forward. So reporting ordinal minus one if we're moving backwards, reporting ordinal minus or plus one if we were using the next one. The next thing we do is we step through the collection and we get the new name for the person that ordinal matches. So we're looking for our new ordinal. And we're going to look and see if the member modifier, so it's uh, as a JSON and number from element member. So if that matches our new reporting ordinal, we want to grab the team name or the username. I'm sorry. So that's the full name string from element. And we're going to set that as our new reporting user full name. Both of those uh, work the same way. Just one increments, one decrements that ordinal. And then we execute the command of refresh, which refreshes the dashboard. And we also have the one step for the reporting prompt for a team member. So this one step will prompt us for which team member we want to select next in our filter settings. The first thing we need to do is have a variable of type JSON array. We called it VT members. And we added our stored value of reporting team members as the data for that array. Then we have a prompt for team member, which will set our member JSON. And this is an interesting uh, methodology here. We're going to use a value list from the collection V team members, which is the JSON array we just created. We're only going to display the full name and we're going to return the entire row as a JSON. Next, after the member has been selected, we'll get our reporting ordinal by modifying the member as a JSON. And uh, we'll get the number from element, which is called member. That's the ordinal. And then uh, the reporting user full name will be set. That will also be uh, from the member element, which is called as a J or with the modifier of as a JSON and string from element, and the name of the element is full name. We then execute the refresh command, and that allows navigation of the dashboard based on that selected team member. So, in review, our universal dashboard navigator from Beyond 20 allows you to set options for the start date, end date team level and team member or original team member that you would like to filter your dashboard on includes the three business object filters for incident, change, request, and problem. It has a forward and backward navigation one step and also a prompt to select the next team member that you would like to show on your report. These widgets and one steps can be added to any dashboard that includes any one or all three of these business objects. I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on ShareWell, ITIL, or other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn more about how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as ShareWell development and administration.